Malin Skull is the one Ahsoka villain who has the most powerful screen presence of the series so far, and I find it so tragic that Ray Stevenson, the legend, cannot be here to enjoy the show with us. As a character, I'm glad he's getting so much love from the fandom, and he is probably the most mysterious of the entire show, with the exception of Marok, mainly because his motives have dumbfounded Star Wars fans in the first three episodes. He's not your typical villain, and I don't even like using that word. There are parts of him that are conflicted, still reminiscing and identifying with the fallen Jedi Order. He was a survivor of Order 66, and some years later, he came across Shin and took her on as his apprentice. She might be his daughter, we simply do not know. But when it comes to Balan, he is reluctant about killing Ahsoka but he knows he has to do it. There is conflict in him, but his ultimate goal overrides that reluctancy, saying that it's a shame because there are so few of them left. Even at the end of episode 3, when he commands his HK-87 droids to go and kill the Jedi, he has a pensive moment, saddened by what he has to do. And this has gotten fans wondering about his true intentions. What does he want when he finds Thrawn? When Shin asked him this very question, he said power, such as you've never seen. We've discussed the possible connections between the names of Skull and Hati and the Nordic Wolves, waiting to devour the sun and moon at the end of the world. But one theory I've put forward that I want to expand upon is that his motive is to stop Anakin turning to the dark side. I believe the power he wants may lie in the world between worlds, or a different iteration of it. Morgan Elsbeth talks about time and space, how Thrawn in the second galaxy is contacting her. This indicates the pathway to Peridia might also hold secrets as to how to go back in time, or the usage of mystical powers to tap into different realities and timelines. With Balan, I think it's simple. He mentions Anakin in the trailers, and he clearly knew that he turned to the dark side. And I think he misses the old Jedi Order, what it stood for, the security, the belonging. As a Dooku-like figure, he seems like a man of honour, and maybe he believes he can change the outcome of what became of the Republic, the downfall. Perhaps he's trying to course correct and use this power that Thrawn is promising for his own rulership of sorts to ensure the downfall never happened again. And so, he wants to turn back time to stop Anakin from turning to the dark side because for him, that was the moment the Jedi Order fell. Then there was Operation Nightfall, the attack of the Jedi Temple, Order 66, and the rest is history. And I've got a new theory that Balin has a huge secret, one he might reveal to Ahsoka in the next episode when the two of them are expected to fight. Balin mentions Anakin and says few knew what he became. I believe Balin has been tracking down Darth Vader's past, remnants of Anakin's life. I believe Balin knew that Vader knew something. We'll come on to this in just a moment. And over the years since the Empire fell, trying to do his best to find the gateway to the world between worlds, which he believes Thrawn can promise him. And there are some clues to this. We see a Republic-like headset, which is the same one that Anakin used at the start of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Not just this, but a clue can be found on his hand. In the Ahsoka premiere, Balin is clearly wearing an obsidian ring, very similar to the one that Snoke wore. Now, unless this was thrown in just as a small easter egg to get fans doing the DiCaprio meme, I think this was deliberate by Dave Filoni, because Obsidian was found in one place, Fortress Vader, on Mustafar. The black shard of Obsidian on top of the Golden Ring was carved from the Sith Cave located beneath the planet of Mustafar. Balan may have gone on a hunt, tracking down remnants of Vader's life. And there is one canonical, I guess you can call it MacGuffin, but it really is a very important device in the comics that was found alongside Obsidian on Fortress Vader on Mustafar, the Screaming Key. We see this in the Kira trilogy of comics, in Crimson Reign, and in Hidden Empire. It was a key that existed during the reign of the Galactic Empire that unlocked a device which had sealed away the Fermenter Cage. Kira wanted to use this to destroy the Sith Lords, Darth Vader and Darth Sidious, so she sends the Knights of Ren to break into Fortress Vader. And here's where my theory gets a bit crazy, but still plausible. The Knights of Ren existed by the time of the Empire Strikes Back. What if Balin was one of these? Because he was so angry at what Vader and Palpatine had done to the Jedi Order, he was mad at this new Empire and he didn't want any part of it. Maybe he was one of the Knights of Ren who broke in, one who tried to recover the key, to destroy them, and along the way, obtained a Shard of Obsidian. The Knights were successful in their attempt to recover the key, despite the efforts of Vader to stop them. Following the mission, the Knights and the Archivist travel to the Dark Side Hellscape, where they acquired the Fermenter Cage. Balin certainly has the physique to have been a Knight of Ren, so why did he leave? 
They're still around at this time, we see them in the sequel trilogy in a different iteration. When he learned through Morgan Elsbeth that before his death the Emperor, and now Grand Admiral Thrawn, knew about the portal known as the World Between Worlds, he saw an opportunity to restore what was lost when the Jedi Order was annihilated. He saw a way to undo the state that the galaxy was now in and had become. But he doesn't want the new Jedi Order, he wants to restore the one of old. Maybe he believes in the prophecy of the Chosen One and he doesn't know that Anakin was redeemed in the end. He wants to turn Anakin back to the light, not knowing, he already did, but at the point of death. Now there is one mystery that remains. So if Balan wants to restore the Jedi Order, if he wants to go back in time and stop Anakin from turning to the dark, then why does he use the dark side to some extent? We call him a dark Jedi. Why is his lightsaber orange? While I think it can be explained just by visual reference to show that he's not fully on the dark, Dave Filoni was inspired by Darth Vader's original lightsaber on the New Hope posters. But beyond this, it could symbolize a new path that is in the middle, not dark or light. There is still so much to Balin's backstory that we still have to learn in this series. But the clues that lead to Mustafar, the tie-ins to Anakin, his obsession with the character, and the fact Ahsoka was Anakin's Padawan, all seems to tie into a trope that Dave Filoni wants to explore. And it would bring up a huge moral dilemma for Ahsoka. If Balin wants to save Anakin from turning to the dark, how is Ahsoka going to react to that? Does she want such a thing? Part of her might say yes, but another part of her realizes what could be sacrificed, what could be lost if she goes down that path. And destiny plays out as it has to, despite the tragedies and loss that she's experienced along her path. Where she is now is where she has to be. And I can't see her giving in to Balin's search for power even if it means saving Anakin, and she's not going to want to do this because Anakin was redeemed in the end. Now returning to the Mustafar aspect of this theory, there was a rumour back in 2022 that Ahsoka is going to feature Darth Vader's castle at some point. We know about the Mustafar vision that Ahsoka has, where she's the one fighting Anakin instead of Obi-Wan. But there was also an additional rumour that the Alasmech of Winset, also known as the Cultists, the Sith cult formed by members of that species, were going to appear in Ahsoka at some point. It was a wild rumour that I reported on, and it could just be nonsense. But if Fortress Vader is a part of this show and is a part of Balin's backstory, that could be fascinating. We saw them in The Rise of Skywalker, they were the ones that Kylo Ren was fighting on Mustafar, much later in the timeline compared to now. And Bespin Bulletin, along with making Star Wars, did confirm the Vader team assembled for the Kenobi show also worked on Star Wars Ahsoka. Did Balin have a run-in with Darth Vader after Order 66? Was he offered the role of Inquisitor? Or was he a Knight of Ren? His physique and clothing style definitely fits. Or the more probable option, we're overthinking it and it's more surface level. Maybe he's just a mercenary at this time, which is what the databank states. Just an Order 66 survivor, seeking power of his own. I guess we're going to find out soon enough, and I know Dave Filoni wants us to be asking these big questions. But what do you guys think? What do you think Balin's motives are? How do you think it's all connecting? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed these theories, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the Force be with you, always.